We are live, Ilta TV, and we have a very, very special guest. If there is a star in our industry, that person is sitting right here beside me, and that's Richard Suskin. Yes, that's you. Thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're very busy. I know you're quick in to uh, Washington, D.C. and back into the U.K. Uh, Living like tomorrow. For our, so Flying visit. Thank you very much. Um, I picked up... Uh, well, not the newspaper, but the printout from a, uh, uh, an article that was in uh, this morning's uh, uh, Financial Post, uh, the Legal Post part of, uh, of a Financial Post, which is a Canadian publication. And Julie Smeltzer is, uh, is a well-known uh, writer, and he talks, obviously, and I think you've mentioned it in your uh, super session today, about uh, the Rio Tinto Group uh, outsourcing uh, to India some of their work. And uh, obviously, there are those out there who are immediately saying, that's it, that's the way of the future. Mm -hmm. Reminds us of professional services organizations, software uh, organizations five, six, seven years ago facing the same uh, uh, trend. The flip side, and that will be the longest that I'm going to talk today, is uh, one of uh, his responses, uh, is uh, one of the people who respond to his uh, uh, query around this uh, trend. He was a CEO of a, of a law firm in, the U in, in, the, in Canada saying, if anything, this is still a marginal phenomenon uh, that's fraught with difficulties relating to quality, remoteness, and the exercise of control. So clearly, uh, not everybody is ready for the changes that are inevitably coming, uh, both in legal uh, and I know that uh, that has been a major focus for you. Uh, so how do you see this change and, and whether or not outsourcing is part of that trend that uh, I think you've been forecasting for a while? The general trend, I suppose, nothing to do with technology, nothing to do with outsourcing. It's just there's less cash about it. Uh, the economy's fallen off a cliff. Uh, lawyers are not exempt from this. Big clients, in-house lawyers, general counsel, uh, big corporations are saying to me, financial institutions too, are saying, We've got less cash, so that means we've got less people to employ. Our own legal teams are, are reducing in size. We've got less to spend on external law firms, and yet we've got more to do than ever before. So this I call the, the more for less challenge. And it's unarguable. Um, and uh, law firms and commentators and everyone can, can talk about the, the pros and cons of all sorts of new techniques, but the underlying problem is that we need as an industry, as a sector, to find ways of delivering more legal service at less cost. And I argue there's about 12 different ways now of sourcing legal services, one of which is outsourcing. And the whole outsourcing phenomenon, it's almost a, a labor arbitrage thing here, but it's saying um, fundamentally that routine and repetitive legal work that used to be the sole province of junior lawyers in expensive law firms in expensive cities, charging high fees, can now be done in different ways. And one of the ways one can do it is by outsourcing it to other organizations who are either seeking less profit or whose overheads are far lower. And I'd like to uh, talk a little more about whether or not law firms will be able to capitalize on any added value or additional added value services to, to, to kind of close that gap that is obviously going to be created in, in, in outsourcing. But before I go that, let me kind of play the, uh, you know, the, you could the be devil's, devil's advocate, advocate yes, if you don't I, mind. I can see that in your face. Uh, the recent downturn seemed to be so severe yeah. um, seven months ago, eight months ago, that everybody basically was convinced that's it. Mm. Law firms cannot ignore it anymore because mm. their clients are in tremendous pain. Mm. There's still lots of pain out there, no mm. doubt about that. But it's not as severe as we thought it was nine months ago, ten months ago. Psychologically speaking, people are saying, you know what, it's not the end of the world. Mm. Will law firms and, and attorneys, lawyers, are they psychologically there or are they kind of going like, you know what, maybe we don't need to change? No, you, you know they're not there in that article to which you refer, I suggest they're not there either. Most law firms, and I understand this, would prefer that what we're seeing is a blip in the economy and that hopefully when the dust settles, it'll be back to the old tariff and we'll be able to charge in the old way we've always charged. That's what most law firms actually hope and, I, and as I say, I fully understand this. I believe, however, when the dust settles, the terrain, the landscape will look wildly different. And let me put it this way to you, if you are a client who has, during difficult times, asked a law firm to trim its fees considerably or to consider different ways of working and the result has been a 30% uh, reduction in fees, why would you want to go back to the old way, even if the economy returns? And more than that, I think what we're seeing now is the legal services industry is under a microscope. Chief finance officers, chief executives are now looking at legal fees and saying, hang on, this is massive fees. All other suppliers seem to be year on year going down in, 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 in cost. 
and legal fees seem to be going up. So I think whether or not you, at the level of a law firm, think this is a good thing, if you're a shareholder mm -hmm. and you get a glimpse there are other ways the company in which I've invested could secure legal services, if you're at board level, non-executive or executive, and you hear case studies of new ways of delivering legal services, mm -hmm. or if you're a new player in the market, perhaps fueled by, as is now possible in England, by uh, private equity or some kind of external investment, the new models are here to stay. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. I'm emphatic about that point. And so, although I fully accept that the economy may be recovering, it might not be as severe a downturn as people had worried about, what has happened, and this has been an accelerator, a catalyst, what has happened is some of the problems, the deficiencies, the inefficiencies of the legal market have come more sharply into focus than has ever been imaginable in the past. So the CEOs are coming in and they're saying to the GCs, Never mind, of course, the, the shareholders. We've got to control this. This is out of control. It's really expensive. We can trim it. Here are the ways. They're saying 30 or 40 percent off next year. Right. No discussion no anymore. No discussion. It's not boom times. Uh, there, there's just no discussion to be had. That's the figure I'm hearing. Whereas if you speak to most people who've really looked at this carefully, the kinds of savings you get by the conventional techniques mm -hmm. of more rigorous con uh, competitive tendering or asking for volume discounts or going fixed fee, at the end of the day, when you look at all the transaction costs and all the time spent in that process, you get a 5% or 10% discount. What we're talking about that's needed is 30%. And I'll just say again, once you've got that 30%, mm -hmm. why on earth would you want, if you're a GC who's worth his salt so and who's back. thinking of his shareholders right. or is uh, under scrutiny from his board, why on earth would you ever want to go back? Right. So so that's my fundamental premise. So, so 